So I'm in the middle of the desert in search of a tank for the shop's lot. Apparently, there's an authentic Sherman tank for sale that was used, get this, in Iwo Jima during World War II. It doesn't get much better than that. With that and the flamethrower, it's going to be an explosive day. So are we close? Almost there. Now five more minutes out. That's it right there. That's the Sherman. Wow. All right, we're here. Look at that tank. Holy sh That is amazing. The tank the guys are looking at right now is an M4A3 Sherman. What makes this tank special, it's the only Sherman tank in private hands that was actually used in the Pacific Theater real Marines jumped into during Iwo Jima. And now they can relive that history as well. This is incredible. So this thing actually saw action in Iwo Jima. This one did. It did see action. It was knocked out three times in the first 24 hours. Um, it was finally taken out of service when they hit the turret at the turret bearing. And uh, we met the gentleman who had to back it out. He's still alive today. I look at it, I just find it incredible because, it, I mean, it's from Iwo Jima. I mean, it's like when they raised the flag on Mount Suribashi, I mean, it's probably the most iconic photo of all of World War II. Well, guys, there's a major problem with this tank. It's made out of wood. You know what that's for? The Japanese had magnetic mines, sticky mines, that they would run up and stick to the side of a tank. So the Marines had to improvise and put wood paneling on the side and on the wheels of the track. So these guys were figuring this out and improvising as best they could to protect themselves. OK. And everything works inside? Every Everything works. How much you want for this thing? Um, I'm looking to get a million and a half. OK, but we get to drive it? You can drive it, and you can shoot it. It's pretty damn cool. Um, you need to go call Corey. Tell him to come down here. He doesn't want, he's not going to want to miss this, OK? All right. Can you, like, point it into a direction so I'm in a straight line? You can do that, too. <laughs> the guy's asking $1.5 million. And that kind of money, I'm thinking about it. But before I do anything, I'm going to have to fire it. Wish me luck. <laughs> you got it. No worries. Nice job, Rick. The door of that car was up for like four seconds. Oh, man. This has been the greatest day of my life, by the way. Not when you were born, Corey. No. <laughs> this is much better than that, I'm sure. You did a good job, Pops. Oh, look at that car. What do you think, Alex? I mean, it is what it is. It speaks for itself. Sherman's are the most desired American tank from World War II. It runs well, it fires well, it's got historical provenance from Iwo Jima. There is one that we know of that sold in the last year that wasn't documented to being at any major battle in the World War II, and it was sold for 1.2 million. So at one and a half million, I, I think that's a fair price. Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> I'll meet you at the Humvee. <sighs> you know, I mean, when me and Alex started discussing me buying a tank, I was thinking I could get into something like this for a couple hundred grand uh, because they made like 50,000 of these, right? A, a little more than that. Yeah, and um, it's amazing. It's got amazing history. Everything about it, it's absolutely great. But um, it's so out of the ballpark for me, man. <laughs> but I really, really appreciate the day. It's been an unbelievable day. At least I got a flamethrower off you. Yes, sir. OK. Um, Thanks, man. Amazing day. This is like one of the greatest days of my life, dude. I drove a tank and I blew something up with a tank.
So Chubb got a call from a guy who's got this particular white SUV that's not really famous. It's more like infamous. <laughs> so this is it. The OJ Bronco. <laughs> wow. It is the OJ Bronco. Are you kidding me? I've never seen anything quite like this. This is it. Well, it's not the OJ Bronco. It's his buddy's Bronco, right? That's right. It's the Bronco OJ was in the back seat of. It's sort of weird, because OJ and his friend, what was his name? AC. They both had identical Broncos. But this is the one everyone knows. This one everyone saw on television, the infamous car chase. And OJ's actually got destroyed, right? Correct. Yeah, so OJ now lives in the state of Nevada. Yeah, I don't think that's by choice. Yeah. I own the white Ford Bronco. The murders were June 12th. OJ was supposed to turn himself in on the morning of the 17th. He didn't. And that's the Bronco that everybody can remember seeing driving up the 405 freeway. I've been offered $500,000 for the Bronco. I turned it down. So here it is. I would like to be able to sell the Bronco and then take that money and give it to my children. So how did you get this thing? At the time of the Bronco chase, I was OJ's agent. Amazing. There were some people that were going to sell the Bronco to a company called, I think it's Graveline Tours, and they were going to go up and down the freeway, go by the murder site, and I just thought that'd be classless, especially since the trial hadn't started yet. So I got it from AC, and have uh, kept it pretty much hidden for the last 22 years. OJ had an amazing football career. All of his memorabilia was worth a fortune. You know, he did movies, he did endorsements. And then in one night, it all fell apart. You know, there's like three or four things in the past, like 30 years, everyone remembers. Everyone remembers where they were at when the Challenger crashed. Everyone remembers where they were at on 9-11. Mm -hmm. And everyone remembers what they were doing when they saw the OJ chase. Exactly. And people my age remember when President Kennedy was assassinated. Yeah. Which, oddly enough, that vehicle is the second most viewed vehicle in history behind the Bronco. That is crazy. So this is like an early 90s Bronco, right? Yeah, 92. Low mileage. How many miles on it? About 36,000. So is that the same license plate that was on it when... Oh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, if you pull up photos, you'll see AC sitting here. And then this license plate, in fact, same frame holder. OK. You know, it's that weird bit of pop history. And you're looking to sell this thing. Yeah, I'd like to. Obviously, you drove it in here. It runs good, and Why don't you take it for a drive? I get the back seat, and we're getting on the freeway. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't just any SUV. It's the SUV. It's the one 95 million people saw on TV doing what I'm about to do right now. Drive really slowly down the freeway. I hope the AC works. I'm sure AC had AC. <laughs> <laughs> On the phone with the police, he like negotiated, I want to go see my mom. Right. So where were you at during the chase? Oddly enough, I was behind the Bronco by about maybe 400 yards. Right behind all the cops, the helicopters. Amazing. It was very surreal. There's a glove back here. No, there's not. <laughs> Do you think OJ wore a seatbelt? I highly doubt. Yeah, he was laying down, oddly enough. He didn't really research the getaway. No. They were using his cell phone, and they just tracked him with the cell phone. Right. So AC just wanted to sell this thing as soon as all that happened? Well, where is he going to drive it, you know, because yeah. people would recognize him, and yeah. he wanted to go incognito. About to cruise on the freeway, chum. Feel that power? Yeah. yeah. See, he didn't opt for the larger motor. No. <laughs> it's pretty spacious. And you've got the best seat in the house. I know. I wish I could get down on the ground and get real comfortable, but I'm too fat. <laughs> well, no, actually, as far as the old Broncos go, I mean, there's still a decent demand for them because it's a good, solid four-wheel drive right. setup. And, yeah, know? I've had people that, when I went to get gas or something, and they would say, hey, you want to sell it? Like, yeah, but it's not probably in your budget. Rick, you're going too fast. It's going 40 miles an hour. All right, well, it feels fast. I'm in the moment. <laughs> I'm definitely intrigued. The problem is, putting a value on this thing is almost impossible. There hasn't been another one that is sold. I know someone would pay a ridiculous amount of money for it. But then again, value is going to be really tough. Here you go, chum. 
All right, so um, how much you want for this? A million three. Um, yeah, think about it. It's a one of a kind. You know where you were when this was on the 405 freeway. Yeah. Worldwide, more people have seen this vehicle than any other vehicle on Earth. But it's not exactly a love story. I mean, this thing, it, like I said, massively iconic car. I'll give you this, it looks amazing. You know what I mean? Rarely do you see a 92 Bronco in this shape. But it also has that bad stuff associated with it. The murders. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now you know this isn't the one that had the blood in it. I know, I know, okay. but that's a lot of money. Okay, I could drop down to a uh, million two hundred fifty. You might get that, or even more at auction. I'm gonna pass on it. Okay. With something like this, it's so much of a gamble because there's nothing to compare it to its price. Right. I'll never sell the Bronco for under a million dollars. I know it's worth that. And if it's not, it will be. Well, thanks for bringing it by. Thanks for taking a ride. Okay. Appreciate it. Let's go have a glass of OJ. Not funny. <laughs> so I'm here in New York to take a look at one of the most historical documents on the planet an original Declaration of Independence broadside. There's probably only 20 left in private hands, and I'm about to take a look at one right now. Jeremy? Hey, Rick, yep. I'm here for the broadside. Come on in. There it is. Um, definitely a wow moment. A wow um, moment, right. This is uh, an extremely rare July 1776 printing of the Declaration of Independence. This is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my career. I've been in this market for years, and it's a thrill to handle something like this. So the condition of this copy is truly exceptional. This was sourced from a private collection. It has never been sold at public auction and is uh, highly sought after. So yeah, this is just incredible. This was right after the 4th of July. I think it was John Dunlop was a printer in Philadelphia. He goes out and um, he basically takes a, a copy from Congress and writes it all out, then goes back to the print shop, lays out his print, and starts printing these. Uh, they think he printed right around 200 of them, OK? And that was the original one. And then when other printers around the country got a hold of them, they also made copies. And this is the New Hampshire one, correct? Correct. That's the way the internet works back then. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, it was a little bit slower. So, I mean, you know, like 10 days later, people in New Hampshire are finding out about this. Right. A week or two later, it's probably in the Carolinas. And eventually, everybody knew about it. I imagine your local tavern, when this was first penned up, there was a lot of people standing around going, damn. <laughs> this is like putting your thumb to the most powerful country in the world at the time. Yeah. And you know what's really cool about this one? You can actually see the pinholes here in the corners, which indicates that it was displayed publicly. It probably hanged for a week. Everyone would come by and look at it. Oh, you know, after a few weeks, a poster for the new band was going to be there. Um, <laughs> they were never, ever meant to be saved. Yeah. As far as documents go, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my career. So how much are you looking for this? This was displayed at the um, National Constitution Center in Philadelphia. Uh, it's an exceptional condition. It's extremely scarce. Two million. OK. Um, everything looks right on it, but I just want a document expert to look at it. I, sure. I have one coming down, best document guy in New York. Once he says everything's the real deal, we'll go from there, OK? OK. <sighs> because a little bit of knowledge can always get you in trouble, and that's what I got. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's worth $2 million for this, but we'll leave it up to him and see what he thinks. I'll be curious to know uh, where he lands. So here we go. Yeah, I am thrilled to see this. I'm Seth Caller, and I'm a dealer and a museum collection builder and an expert in important historic documents. Everything looks right to me, but like, um, I don't want to be 99% sure. Right. <laughs> I normally would have to take this out of the frame to authenticate it, but I've actually seen this exact copy before. Some of the things that we looked at when I first authenticated this was to compare this to all of the known copies of the same broadside. 
and part of what held it up there are the nail holes from uh, back then which are not you know very consistent round nails like we have today they're all handmade and different and you can see on the handmade laid paper even the impression of individual letters people think of the declaration of independence as the signed copy but that was actually done a month later really as a souvenir the word had to get out by these printed documents so there were a couple hundred printed on the night of July 4th to 5th. They're sent out by John Hancock, and the major cities where they arrive uh, reprint them. And this copy actually was posted on a wall. So you can imagine 1776, somebody walking up to it and reading about this event that changed their lives. All right, so, so I mean, it's 100% legit. Absolutely. All right. Um, brass tacks, what is it worth? This particular one is a really beautiful copy. Uh, it's just a wonderful broadside, an important relic of history, and the world changed when the first people looked at this very document. I think this could go for $2 million at auction now. That's what I want to hear, man. I will let you know what happens, man. I mean, uh, yeah. thanks for coming in. OK, thanks. Thanks. Good to see you. This is a fantastic, rare, earth-changing document. If Rick can purchase this, I think it would be great for him. I'd be a little jealous. All right, so he said it was, you know, it could be worth $2 million. You know, whenever you hear on the news something selling at an auction for a lot of money, that's the headline number. There is a ridiculous amount of fees. I would love to give you, like, $1.4 million. I mean, it's a fair point you make about the fees. I mean, you know, I, I know how it works. Um, I would sell it to you for 1.5 million. Okay. Um, I'll meet you in the middle. Uh, 1.45, I, I think that's fair. I, I think we can both be happy with that. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think we got a deal. Uh, oh my goodness, I own the Declaration of Independence. This... Congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. Um, I will get the money wired to you. I will pick it up from you tomorrow. Um, I have a friend I want to show it to, so just keep it till tomorrow. And um, like I said, thanks again, Ben. Yeah, no, it's been a pleasure. So, you know, 1.45 million, no fees for the auctioneers, get the deal done today. I'm happy, cue the fireworks. I just landed in London for my much needed vacation. Now I'm headed out to the city of Chester to check out my buddy's pot shop. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, Rick. <laughs> Long time no see. You too. <laughs> this is a little Mark. Hello. Hi, mate. Good to meet you. How's it going? Good, good. So this is it, huh? Yeah, that's it, mate. This is the uh, little shop. Little quite English shop, you know. Okay. Well, show me around. Yeah, let's have a look around. I've known Rick for about five years. Um, we met at the coin show in Las Vegas. Been friends ever since. I mean, his pawn shop's good, but it's American at the end of the day. He's got 200 years of history. We've got 2,000 years of history. He's got nothing compared to us. Now, I've got something here that will blow your socks off. OK. This is what you've been looking for all your life. All right. Ready? Ready. Yeah. Really? I'm ready. Wow, it's absolutely beautiful. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you think it's a piece of rusty metal, don't you? Well, it is a piece of rusty metal. Remember that really famous ship that would never sink? Oh, the Titanic. That's it. That's part of the Titanic's hull. So is this where it ran into the iceberg? Or? No, the opposite side, the good side. All right. They sent down the, the little submarine and it broke off a piece, or? It was the massive operation. They sent down several submarines. They broke off the big piece, which is 20 tons, and brought it up. And then from the big piece, they took these samples off. So got all the paperwork for it. Not many people have touched that. That's amazing, isn't it, really? That is amazing. And it's amazing how much it's worth, because you just can't get it. So is it for sale? Everything's for sale, mate. You know that. I'll sell anything. How much you want for it? This, this is a gem. I've had an offer on this a few days ago. If you can beat it, you can buy it off me. How much? How much do you reckon? That's a number I have no idea on. I just don't. I mean, I've never... This... I've never tried to research a piece of the Titanic. That is going to cost you £1.2 million. Pounds. 
Yeah. If you could make anything over 1.2 million, that's, that's my offer of that I had two days ago, 1.2 million pound. If you could beat that, it's yours, mate. Okay, so what else do you have? <laughs> <laughs> what point? Come on, that's a good piece. Imagine breaking it up into several pieces and putting it into frames and, and stuff. So, you'll make a fortune out of that. Um, out of my price range. What do you got in, like, rock and roll stuff? All I know is I'm not dropping 1.2 million pounds on a chunk of metal, unless it's a really big chunk of gold. <laughs>